Welcome to Unhinged and Bumbled Up, where you can join serial dater Phil, that's me, and dating detoxer Liz, that's me. Welcome to the world of online dating. What can you expect in the Unhinged and Bumbled Up podcast? Dating do's, don'ts and disasters. What we and our guests would gladly chuck in the 2020 dating bin to be gone forever. What real people really think about those tricky dating dilemmas. Awesome dating trivia. You'll never know when it'll come in handy for that pub quiz. Top tips and tricks from our awesome guest experts who luckily know a little more about dating than we do. So if you've ever had a dating disaster... Ignore the red flags. If your dating life is less successful than that time when Megan and Piers met... Then then you're in in the the right place. place. Do we know what we're talking about? No! Our dating lives are both utter shite. So So join join us as we talk talk all things things dating. dating. The The good, the the bad bad, and the... Sorry, there's there's just no spark. Hello and welcome to the Unhinged and Bumbled Up podcast. I'm Liz, he's Phil, and today we're joined by Richard Hill. So you might have seen Richard on the First Dates Hotel, and you might think that you know him if you're one of his 25,000 on Instagram followers. But this week we're going to show you there's a little bit more to Richard than what you saw on the TV. So Richard's going to be sharing what his life is like, how his life has changed from being on the TV, and what he's looking for, which may or may not be a brunette 34 year old podcast host i mean just as like a completely random example that i've plucked out of the air Come on, Liz. <laughs> keep it professional so <laughs> welcome richard of of course consumer professional welcome richard thanks so much for jumping on today um do you want us to tell your our listeners a little bit about yourself yeah um well thank you uh <laughs> and thanks for having me on but my name's richard i'm 36 i live in the northwest of england in saddleworth former military former sportsman and now I own a gym. I've done a few careers. I've I've traveled a lot of the, the world I would I would like like to think. I'm extremely single. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm generally I'm generally just a very happy chappy. I just like my morning coffee. I like to read a good book. I like to train every day. I see my friends a ton. I've had some very nice things in my life and I've found some of the best things are just the things that I, I have at home. I'm really, really lucky in what I do. Nice. Great intro. Amazing. So obviously the way that Phil and I came across you was um, to see you on First Dates Hotel. So maybe let's start there. Mm-hmm. Um, how was that experience for you? What did you kind of take away from it? They'd asked me previously, I wanted to go on it, but see, well, I was only about 12 months or so away from breaking up with um, the mum of my son, Samson. Mm-hmm. And it was just a bit too early, really. And then they asked me a second time. And I would say that my, my feelings towards meeting someone had changed, but possibly not the way you'd want them to change if you're on a dating program. Um, I remember I spoke to the guy and said, um, as far as I'm concerned, it may well be that I, I, I've chosen to be single forever. Forever, I may not want anyone in my life again. And that always, I always get frustrated in people's response to how I, how I feel about that sometimes because it feels like you should meet somebody or I'm somehow wasting myself to not meet anybody. But in actual fact, I mean, my, my great auntie, my auntie Lily, she's um, my dad's sister, but she's 20 years older than him. So she feels like a grandma to me. Mm-hmm. She had um, a marriage that provided with this with a beautiful family for a short period of time, a uh, beautiful son, but it went through some real challenges and she, was, she suffered uh, as a result of that relationship. And I said to her one time, I was like, why do I not have an uncle? I remember being very small and asking her. And she said, there won't be any more men in my house like that. She said, I like to go out dancing. I like to go and go out to dinner with people, but there won't be any more men in my house like that. I've been married. I've had that experience. And I don't want to do that again. And she wasn't upset about it or bitter about it. She just made that. She was like, you know, I, you know, especially when you've been through it, like I'm, I'm not somebody who's very good at talking about the psychology of, of trauma or things like that. Yeah. But I think that, you know, a relationship's a really long period of time and people can suffer in, in, a, in, a, in a few seconds, a, a, an event and a relationship and a breakup can be a year, it could be 18 months, it can be mm-hmm. a certain period of time. Is it surprising that somebody might want to say, you know what, I, I might not want to do that again. Yeah, I mean, we bring it up quite a lot on the show. It's about what society says. Society says that you need to do this. Society says you need to do that. But no, you don't have to do, there's no rule book for life. Yeah. And I think my one of my biggest bugbears is this whole other half thing. Like, um, that, like this is my other half or I'm looking for my other half. And it's like, nope, <laughs> fine, whole, like fully, fully formed. May yeah. or may not want to like 
team up with another whole person, but definitely not a half looking for another half. Yeah. So when it came to the program, I was way more what would i say i had i had been through obviously um anxiety and i'd suffered depression like clinically mm -hmm. on both those subjects but i was out the, the side of that i was feeling really healthy good about myself i said to the guy i'm i'm happy to go on the program i said i think it actually could be quite entertaining because the first thing you have to show me is you have to convince me and probably an audience that there might be somebody there for me because i'm not mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. okay. i said however like i absolutely adore first dates it's such a great show um i said i'm more than willing to be part of it i think it's great and i'd, I'd be excited to see and yeah so when i went on the program i went on a date with amelia who i mm -hmm. still speak to like really frequently we get on like a ton we did we differ we actually have huge disagreements over loads of things but generally over what i would say is like quite intellectual situations and generally my um neanderthalic um, understanding of her quite complex structures <laughs> uh, but we are friends like re really closely as a result of that and my overall overwhelming feeling is is it's, it's just been incredible it's just been absolutely incredible filming it i had a panic attack which they didn't show thank god for that where we needed like um to get the producers in and a medic and stuff and, and it was pretty bad but that wasn't because um of the experience that was just because you know, I'm, I'm t at the time I was totally on my comfort zone. Yeah. Filming the program is actually not like you'd imagine. It's not a whole type of TV set. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Just how I built it up myself, I think I got myself into a bit of a tiz. Um, but once, but that, but that doesn't really like put a, a, um, a shadow over the entire experience because uh, uh, back at that time I was having panic attacks, just not regularly, but, but you know, here and there on quite stressful situations and stuff. So overall, I just think it's been absolutely incredible that's amazing and we found out on the show that you've got aspergius how is dating in like emotionally i suppose there are a few difficulties yeah. i would say that socially there's probably a few more issues you'll probably know like i enjoy the podcast format and part of the reason is i suppose is that asperger as those who have aspergers are often typically without having really in-depth one-sided conversations mm -hmm. you can get into a subject talking and almost fill both sides of the, the talk yeah. and look in a deep kind of like root of, of conversation it can be sounds silly but sometimes i can almost objectively see myself doing it and it's very it sounds silly it's so hard to pull myself out of that when i'm looking i'm thinking like this is not what you richard why are we discussing like i don't know like <laughs> whole or physics or some fucking sorry excuse me. you can swear all you like it's fine don't and, worry uh, something that you watched on youtube yesterday to this depth on a date <laughs> one time i ended up act, i had a vegan girl come over for dinner and i promise you i have i that girl is so wonderful as a person and beautiful and i spent ages like just admiring her from a very far distance and she became single and I remember I asked her out and she came over. This is like all before lockdown. And uh, she was vegan and I and I cooked her a vegan dinner and we had a great day. Apart from halfway through the day, I went on a, a monologue, like an absolute monologue <laughs> about how veganism is not for me and I <laughs> fundamental flaws and principles. And I couldn't pull myself out. I was like... We're down this rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. We're committed. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, I can't like, I can't stop out of just awkwardness. Didn't feel awkward. I yeah. just was like, oh, like this is, this is, you see yourself doing it though. And you know, I've been told, I've, I've been expressed to me how it feels to be on the side of that. And you're like, they're going to be feeling this right now. And you're like, you know what, bro, well, not going to stop. <laughs> nope. Still going. Carry Still on. Oh, having that spurge is awesome. <laughs> I can solve puzzles though. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Got to be some plus points. So, I'm just working this through in my mind. So obviously I mentioned obviously you, that you have quite a lot of Instagram followers. You've been on the TV. I'm sure your DMs lit up like crazy after that show was aired. And it, it would be easy to assume that you have plenty of opportunities to meet the right person. And I imagine that people certainly who aren't in that situation are thinking like, well, there's this like smorgasbord of women presenting themselves to you. Like how, how is it to be on your side of that? I want to try and say this, but not flippantly. <laughs> And also not to sound like a total bellet. Um, but yet, like, yes, there are. And there are, I suppose, really two obvious sides to that. One of them is, is that I've enjoyed over quite an extended period of my life having really good sex with a lot of different people. And I'm sure this, this is what you'll, you'll agree with me. You're like, there's no reason to feel guilty about that whatsoever. Okay. I've had a fantastic time, especially, you know, being single the past few years, like, I mean... It's not the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. However, however, you recognize sometimes that that's a time and a place. 
that was appropriate for a short time under certain circumstances to to you know like be transparent and say this is this is where I am, this is what I'm about, this is what we're gonna this is what I want to do. And I'm really lucky that I've met people who are like, I'm here for it, you know, like, yep, yeah, me too. Let's 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 have fun. The thing about it is now though, is that you know, I recognize probably that Richard was a bit, you know, was a bit came with a bit of negativity, came with a bit of, was a bit toxic, was a bit ineffective. That wasn't me living most of my days the way I would like to be thought of as a person. And it's a load of fun, but so is, I don't know, robbing a bank. I bet that's got a lot. But that's <laughs> I mean, I've never tried it, but I could imagine it is. <laughs> well, I mean, I bet it's an absolute yeah. buzz, but it doesn't mean you should do it. And equally, like, I feel in this case, like, I look back on that and think, I don't, I'm not hugely regretful, but at the same time, I'm like, is it what you want to do tomorrow though? And the day after really, mm-hmm. the thing is about now is that you've got like, yeah, there are a lot of messages and especially when you feel like I've already done the work in my head. I'm like, I was on a TV program. They already have an idea what I'm like, and it's great. So now all you need to do is the final bit, which is actually sleep with them. Except like, you're like, do you really want to be like that? Not really. No. So, yeah. and there's kind of no like work involved for that is there there's no like graft and there may be no sense of achievement because it's sort of fell in your lap it's not even like a sense of achievement it's you'd be having sex with someone that doesn't really know you at all mm-hmm. and someone, it's a false impression it's a great idea the producers did me an absolute job i also want to create a beer at channel four definitely um and as a reason but as a result though like it's not that I'm saying, oh, I'd really miss out on the chase. That's not what I'd miss out on. I think I'd just be not the human being that I particularly want to be at the moment. No. So, But there's a little bit of my head that's like, just go out and smash everybody. Just have a great time. Just go absolutely mental. This will be hilarious. And yeah. then the rest of you are like, no! <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, they've only seen you on TV. They've seen what we've seen of you. And that's all they know about you. Like, they don't know the real Richard. Do they know what's on TV? So. A polished version that's very, you know, with the music in the background, and he seems very sensitive. And I'm sure, I'm sure, fundamentally, I have, as cringeworthy as it is, I suppose fundamentally that is a decent representation of me. Yeah. I am quite a sensitive person. Um, I am quite reflective. I would like to think I'm quite gentlemanly. I really enjoy going on dates and having dinner with people and talking and learning. And I, I, I like to actually meet somebody and go through a process of like proper conversation, but they're just the enhanced versions that comes with background music and a narrator. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, you've got to be aware. I mean, I don't, I don't know how it would be to be famous, to be absolutely honest with you. If I've had, I've had, let's be honest, the absolute perfect amount where for one week people care about you and then it goes away. And that way, if I was, a, if they did it differently and I was an awful person, at least it would only be for one week. Yeah. And I feel like um, I've had one week. I don't know how you would, I don't know how you would not be a horrendous human if you had this consistently from a young age. Yeah, I, I can imagine just inboxes blowing up and daily and, you know, it's it's a different world really and we don't understand it. We counted on Friday, this, is, I did this program on Wednesday. So basically on one Wednesday, they did it online. Then the following Wednesday, they did the live show in. And on the Friday, I was at work and me and my, my, like my guy working my business with, we're talking about this. And he said, how many messages have you had? And I said, well, in the last hour, I've had 25. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, don't know, I don't know who it's so. So, I mean, and that's me being what I would say is unconventionally attractive and unconventionally like portrayed on the program. If I was an actual heartthrob who actually looked like a model, can you imagine mental. that on a daily basis? Be crazy. So you mentioned your appearance and obviously you mentioned your business as well. We know that um, you ran a CrossFit gym. I myself returned from CrossFit a mere one hour ago and can only just breathe again. Um, so tell us about kind of the the relationship between kind of um, physical appearance or physical health and dating. Um, because I, the, we have this kind of debate sometimes about does, does looking good either make you more attractive or is it about then how you present yourself like phil had finally a haircut at the start of this week thank the lord and is now feeling on form he's got a new tattoo today he's ready to clean up level up level up, level up, level up. <laughs> love that song <laughs> tell us about how you see the relationship between physical appearance confidence and dating oh mate like i uh mo- i most of my knockbacks if not like nine out of ten of them 
come from um, they just look at you me and say I don't want a guy who eats chicken and rice I don't want a guy who spends his time at the gym I don't want a guy who's got no personality I don't want a guy who lifts weights and got them to say for himself it's not a always me situation it's just a case of can I ask all the guys who do bodybuilding to just be less boring and <laughs> <laughs> just change the stereotype ideally yeah, just, just, uh, just, fellas I mean if you could just you know have a beer every now and again just be not boring that would be ideal for me I like to think that you know, my one hour in the gym that I spend a day doesn't really reflect any of the 23 hours of the day. It is, it's going back to that judging a book by its cover, isn't it? Because of how you look, people are going, he must spend all the time in the gym. He must eat this, 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 and he must not have a life outside of the gym. And really, it's not true. <laughs> I, well, for starters, there's a lot of books that are quite fit because if you ever wore a uniform, we did our fitness during our work hours for several years. So mm -hmm. like most military units are training three, four, five times a week during the working day. Civilians don't get to do that. You've got to go and find time. So it, on a civilian, it's a reflection of a particular dedication and a particular interest that you look fit and healthy and in good shape. In the military, it's a product of simply going to work. Like mm -hmm. we used to do group fizz pretty much every single day and it was compulsory. We all get together. We all work out every day. Um, so it, it, to me, this is, not, this is not really a reflection of um, a specific choice that I'm, like, I'm really interested in my body. It's simply a fact of lifestyle. Like over the years, I've, I've created the habits that, that keep me healthy and in good shape. And I've said this before, like if you're following me, I said this probably before you guys followed me, about two months before you guys followed me, I put a post up where someone said something and it was, a, it was a, in my opinion, a little bit cheeky. All I said was, if you follow me because of how, my, how I look, then like move on because this will all go and it will go sooner than you think. Like I care less about my, my physique than you think I do. And all the people who followed me for a long time know it. Like mm -hmm. it will go. And my interest at the moment delivers me to the gym X many times because I physically work there and I have a capacity yeah. to do it within, within this area. But I mean, even during lockdown, like people are like, how do you stay motivated? What do you mean, how do I stay motivated? I don't stay motivated. I do something else. I only train once, twice a week during lockdown. Um, I went for hiking. Um, I just played the drums. I did other things that seemed <laughs> more interesting and attractive to me than doing press-ups. Now, before we move to the next segment, have you heard about our giveaway? We are giving away a bundle worth up to the value of £300. And if you're listening and already press the subscribe button, you are part the way there to entering. So head over to our Instagram after the show. Now, back to the episode. Dating disasters. This segment of the show is called Dating Disasters, because let's face it, we've all had them. Each week we'll be asking our guests to share their worst dating disaster, and we'll be sharing a dating disaster we've either received, or one of our own. Good, so, um, dating disasters. Let's okay. talk dating disasters. This one, was so, there's not so many, I wouldn't say so many, but this one was one of my favourites. So um, I was in a long-term relationship, and um, the first one I was going, like seeing is like quite well known. If anything, our relationship was really well known because of social media. Like you see Samson all the time on social media. You saw my partner on social media all the time. And we used to go everywhere together. Like it was like this. However, we break up. And about a year, I didn't see anybody for at least a year. And I mean, like I was not interested. Um, anyway, I went on the first, the very first date about a year later, and it was with um, a friend of a friend, actually, and she was absolutely fantastic. Well, anyway, we met her, and I was like, really happy to be there, and we go into the restaurant, and um, uh, there's waitress came up to say, we'll take the order, and she said, uh, oh, it's tricky, isn't it? And I went, uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Oh, fuck, fuck, it's a bit embarrassing. She went, um, my boyfriend follows you, and I was like, oh, cool, must be a bit of this guy, that's awesome. Um, and I kind of turned to her, I was like, do you want to order, or do you want me to? And she went, just wondering where uh, <clears throat> thingy is. And I was like, well, I would imagine she's with the new boyfriend that she's been with oh. for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and this girl went, have you two like broken up? I was like, yeah, about a year ago. And now I'm here and she's she's got a new boyfriend now. 
and this is awkward. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, just sat there. Now, I, I didn't feel too bad, but I was, I did feel for the person that offered me. I was like, this is not a good start for a date. Even <laughs> I'm being extremely emotive, but I'm aware what a major fuck up is. So I was like, I feel like you just tried to out me for cheating on like my first date with this, this nice little lady here. And she was like, no, 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 no. And the best thing is, the girl sat opposite just looked at the waitress and went, well, go on then, fuck off. <laughs> unfortunately unfortunately as much as we're laughing now and it was amusing at the time to me no that was pretty much the start and end of that that was <laughs> she was like do you get this often and there's this entire question of like oh really so oh good. and it went down that yeah, yeah. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. fuck off that was oh. the funniest thing oh man Oh, yeah, I had that one. Um, dating wise, I, I don't think I've had too many disasters. I mean, I have probably been a disaster. <laughs> I have been... One of my best friends is, has been married for like 10 plus years. And on his first ever date, he uh, literally um, soiled himself. Um, yeah, he soiled himself on my first ever date. And had to dispose of his pants and stuff. And she didn't know until he told that story about five years later that their first ever date, he'd um, absolutely made a mess. We nearly got through an episode of <laughs> dating disasters without talking about someone shitting themselves. Yeah. Like, <laughs> our first episode, the dating disaster, was about poop. Our second episode, the dating disaster, was about poop. We've actually created like a no shit rule that the dating yes. disaster cannot involve poop, but here that we are still the ones again. Like, I, I'm just astonished that he would ever go back, if you know what I mean. Like, if I had that level of if I'd done that and felt embarrassed, I'd be like, we're never seeing each other ever again. Are you kidding me? Nope. No, major ghosting. So, Bill, you've got a dating disaster for us. I have. This one's been sent in. Um, the guy's Irish, so Richard, it's not you. It's all right. <laughs> so I'll read this as it got sent. So I had done the casual dating, vetting of phone calls, picks, questions. Seemed normal enough. Irish guy over here working for the summer at uh, uni, summer thing. A little younger, but both seemed on the same page about what we wanted. Arranged to go to the movies, arrived separately, all that jazz. The cinema was in a shopping centre, so it wasn't weird that he turned up with a super drug bag. Didn't question it, didn't want to be nosy, and had enough to talk about. So they queued up, conversation flowing, sweet and salt of popcorn, winner. Went into the movie... Apparently it was Ted 2, wasn't that good. I thought Ted 2 was awesome, actually, but never mind. Um, all was going well. Nice, normal guy. End of the film, collected our stuff off the floor and his bag had split. Didn't seem remotely phased that the lube and condoms were spilled all over the floor in the middle of the cinema, saying, I can find... Wait, I find it can get oh, a bit sore the first time without lube unless you're both really into it, especially the butt stuff. I mean, we'd both said casual, but this was a bit of an assumption, especially the anal on the first date. So there I we mean, go. That's a lot to go to your date with with accessories that you literally just purchased. There are ways to carry accessories. There are ways to travel and transport them that are not... Not in a super truck bag. <laughs> but also, he had a lot riding on the quality of Ted 2 there, didn't he? Yes, he did. Which I feel like Mark Wahlberg could not deliver on. No. <laughs> under any circumstances. That is not a film that's going to make you want to do butt stuff on the first date. Yeah, I, I, or any not date. dates to the cinema for like many, many dates down the line. Cinema, worst day ever. Mm -hmm. You can't talk. You can't, no conversation, nothing like that. You sat in a dark room looking at a screen. Worst day ever. Hands go into the popcorn, hands touch. Oops, sorry. Da, da, da. Yeah, Absolutely. no cinema dates. Cinema dates should what go in the bin. But... They should. We can put them on the list to go in the <laughs> we'll bin. We'll put them on the list. I love that you put um, 
Is it walking dates you've already put in the bin? I that was my cool. one on, on the first episode. Fuck off with the walking dates. I just want to be able to sit in a bar with somebody. <laughs> <gasps> I never did a walking date. My friend did this whole thing during lockdown. She'd met this great guy. They had walking dates, they had picnics and stuff. And then as soon as the possibility for it's transferred to a normal date arrived, it all went like south. I was like, that's mm-hmm. because you spent too much time going crap walking. walking. I also told Phil on, on that episode about the best walking date, which, I, which you know, isn't saying much the bar is very low where a guy bought like really good snacks it's like amazing for catch art in a bag which we ate while walking and also cheese he just like handed me handfuls of cheese and like delicious italian meats <laughs> i saw him today at crossfit it was brilliant <gasps> we were like hi we went on a date this is cool um oh. then we had to get like cotton sweaty together and it was weird because normally is the circumstances are much more fun than that <laughs> Did he get mentioned on dating the Double D? Was he one of the names in your phone book? No, he's a he... nice one. He didn't That's deserve good. a terrible name. That's I, good. I don't know. I must be. I think this is part of my character. I, I, I can't envisage a way in which I could deliver a walking date and take it seriously. Like when you said, like, oh, he brought the best for catcher. I, I, I can't. I literally cannot envisage a moment in which that exists and I'm present. I feel like. I just feel like it'd be awful. I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. It was awful. That's why it went in the bin. It was also pissing down with rain. And I had a hood. So I was like, he was just looking at basically my nose sticking out of my hood. Um, and he didn't have a hood or an umbrella. And so he had like literally just raindrops coming off of his eyelashes. And the bag with the catcher got all wet. It was, it was, it was not good. You place. always carry an umbrella in the car. I'm super self-conscious like a lot of the time and I feel like it's taken a really long time to get comfortable in how I how I can go into a date. Like, right. I mean, for me personally, I think it sounds just but my, my image is one thing I'm really self-conscious of. Like, I'm never sure what I should look like. And I think that comes out in having the beard and the tattoos and the hair and stuff like that. Like, I just don't know what I sh- how I want to express myself in look. Because I always think like, whatever I am is inside all of this. Like mm-hmm. behind, my, behind my eyes, behind all this is, is me. And the outside is just an expression of me. Do you know what I mean? I don't feel like I have a natural way of expressing. I don't know what I should, what, how it should be. I, I, do you get that? Any of ever? Yeah. yeah. Being, then, so to get to a point where on a date where I'm like, look, okay, what we kind of need to do here is we kind of need to fit in on like the 80%, but the 20%, you can kind of be a party and be yourself. All right. So like going on a date's good for me because I'm like, if I pick somewhere for dinner, or I pick someone to a bar, I've got outfits that I'm specifically, I've, like, I've tried to get this, I've worn it, it works, this is what I'm going to do. If you said to me, we're having a catcher on the cricket <laughs> <laughs> I'd be there in cricket whites. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was uh, it was along the river, so I'm lucky you didn't turn up in some sort of boating attire. A boat or, uh, <laughs> like, do you know the um, the gondoliers? Yeah, <laughs> in Italy, causing was yeah. that. I feel like that would have added a certain something to be to be fair. I'm gonna next time I see him at CrossFit, I'll suggest it. Yeah, remember the uh, stripy jacket and white pants that are Mary Poppins. That be yes. <laughs> cross fat or cross fit. section we've created a game just for Richard Hill to see whether he knows his cross facts about dating or whether he'll have to take a CrossFit challenge. So we've created a special game for Richard. It's called Cross Fat or Cross Fit. So what we will be doing is we've got some questions in front of you. Uh, in front of us, <laughs> uh, that we'll be asking you. And for everyone you get right, well done. <laughs> for everyone you get wrong, we will be doing a live at some point where you have to do 10 of an Something. exercise in okay. your in your okay. The worst thing. one. I'm going to do some more <laughs> research at CrossFit and find the worst <laughs> possible combination of things to get, to get okay. you to do 10 of. Okay, all right, all right. I'll take that. Hey, I'll Liz. Fitness. <laughs> we can do this. We can do it. <laughs> I'm going to get one wrong. I feel. Uh, I mean, we can not give you options if you want. If you if you feel that confident, we can take the <laughs> options away. <laughs> 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 so, question one: What does the term "elsed" mean? 
As in, as in Elsa from verb Frozen. To be Elsa'd. <laughs> Elsa'd? Yes. I thought these were fitness based questions. I don't oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I am. <laughs> You're so confident now. I am so screwed right now. <laughs> oh, my God. To be Elsa'd. Well, yeah. uh, well, can we see your phone? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got, I'm, I'm just putting cream on my arm. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so, Elsa. So, obviously, it's um, the, the queen out of Frozen, and she storms up a mountain and then puts herself in some sort of fortress. So, put that in dating terms. Sort of like girl that locks you out and then puts herself on a pedestal and never returns. Uh, Pretty I'm, fucking accurate, you know what? to be I'm going to give you that. It's the cousin of ghosting. This frozen inspired trend is when someone you're speaking to online suddenly goes quiet and freezes you out. With no explanation, suddenly their responses get shorter and a lot frostier before eventually saying nothing at all. The only thing you can do is let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Had to happen. To be honest, I totally recognise this one. It's like, it's like the slightly more either polite or possibly passive aggressive form of ghosting where you're like well i'll reply but it's going to be one word and a bit shitty in tone until, until you eventually give up until, it took me until i was 33 <laughs> i remember this so condescending patronizing sorry my friend literally gave me like a hug and a pat on the back a female friend this is um, when I told her, I was like, oh, she said, how did you date go the other night? I went, you know, it was really good. She was such a nice person, really happy. But I just didn't feel it. So I ended up just saying at the end, like, I had such a good time. But, you know, I just don't think, I don't think there's anything there. And, uh, and uh, but it's been such a pleasure to get to know you. And, uh, and literally, Ellie just gave me a hug. I was like, Richard, you're 33 and you, you've finally become a man now. I don't think, I think, I know. And it's embarrassing how, I mean, men, uh, women else are in, don't get me wrong, that that's there as well. But I really feel, if I, I don't feel regret on a lot of things, but I think it's a shame that I didn't learn to have that conversation earlier in my life because I, I hate to think how many women I've let down along the way by not. Not just saying it how it is. Yeah, just being honest. And it's really not nice, actually, when you've had a really nice time. Um, and I've had the same thing when you've had a really nice time and then someone to say, I really enjoyed it. It's just, I don't think it's going to be for me. And you're a little, it makes you question a lot of things. It's a really hard thing to do, but come on, like Richard, like why did it take so long in your life to learn this conversation? Yeah. And, and the turmoil of hearing that is so much less than the turmoil of checking your phone every five minutes for the next two weeks, kind of desperate for a shred of something and not getting it. Like, and realising the WhatsApp photo has disappeared and you can no longer get in touch on anywhere else. <laughs> I don't know. I think I don't know for me personally. I'd rather just someone stop talking to me. Mm-hmm. Easier. I'd just be like, oh, all right, well, well, that's that then. Zero pain involved. <laughs> Yeah. So Phil and I had a, an interesting conversation about this a while ago, actually, because Phil's point, and I, I'm going to paraphrase Phil, but your point was, if somebody doesn't like something about me, I'd rather be told what it is so I know what it is and can then maybe decide whether I want to change it. Like if it's something to do with the physical appearance. I'm just not sure how helpful that is. Like, don't tell me you think I've got a fucking massive nose and you don't fancy me because of it. Like, that does not help me. Like, I'm probably not going to get a nose job. So how does that... Like, I couldn't have told, like, that guy who had a really weird-shaped head that I didn't want to go out there again because he had a really weird-shaped head. Like, because he can't do anything about that, right? Like, how is that helpful? We haven't got to the weird-shaped head yet. <laughs> they don't know about the weird-shaped <laughs> head. They don't know about the weird-shaped head. Well, that joy is still to come. But my point is... is Honesty and transparency is really helpful, but sometimes it's appropriate to use code. And sometimes... They, I'll tell you straight out, there'll never be a day in which no matter how bad or good a date went, I would tell them there was a... I would pick out a flaw in it. They will never... That day will never arrive. That level of honesty will never arrive because I think it's unnecessary. And even if they were saying, please just tell me, no, no, I will not tell you because... <laughs> No, no good is going to come from this. No. And there are some things which are which are code. And sometimes, like, there's no spark means there's no spark in a lot of cases. And sometimes it means there's another thing, but we don't really need to talk about what it is. It's just yeah. not for me. I just think and that, like, it's okay. to be honest, I don't want to hear it. Like, it, I, well, I have the best friends in the world. 
And they give me plenty of feedback on my personality and my character and the things that I do. And say I went on two or three dates that were not so fantastic. And it may well be one of my best friends. I'm really lucky to have a lot of female friends, which helps as well. They might just turn around and be like, at the moment, your fucking attitude is, is half the problem. Or at the moment, Richard, you're really uptight about this thing or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. they're the people that are going to be honestly and transparent in talking to me. And they're going to tell me in such a way that is kind and loving, and I'm going to trust it and roll with it. I think if I go on a date with one person, they turn around and say, actually, I thought you were this about your character. I'm always going to be like, you don't know me. Like, yeah. you don't know me. And equally, I think if they pick something out physical, I think that'd be extremely unfair and unkind. I think I would never tell somebody that because I don't think that would ever be appropriate, to be honest. I'd rather just say, it was good, but it, it might not just be for me. So this came about through a conversation with my friend and I said to him about the fact of people saying there's no spark. And then it got into the discussion and him saying that, well, people should be more honest. And I agreed with your point, <laughs> by the way, that people should, shouldn't be honest. And he carried on and said, but then people should be. And then the honesty comes back and I said, But then what they'll probably get back is they'll get abuse back and it becomes this match where, oh, I didn't like this about you. Oh, I didn't like this about you. And it just carries on and carries on. That doesn't need to happen. It's bye-bye, see you later, done. It may well be, though, that the reason this person doesn't match for me is because perhaps they don't share their, how can I be like so hippie about this, but like share their kind of heart with me in the sense that maybe the reason I've got no chemistry for them is because I don't trust their sensitivity Mm -hmm. or I don't trust their level of, uh, conscience around honesty and as a result i don't want to tell you that thing because frankly i think you'd be mean if you said it to me so you know like i think for me i'm may i'm not down for that yeah there's 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 being open about how you feel about a situation but you don't necessarily always have to go into the details and specifics of it mm-hmm. we've gone down a rabbit hole <laughs> um, what do you say if you like oh, i've been on other people and they're a better prospect i mean we, yeah, I think that's a, also something that, that comes up a lot is like, how honest should you be about your situation? And I'm always like of the, like, if you don't want to know the answer to something, don't, don't ask it. But also there are a lot of unspoken agreements that take place with people where somebody is, I find very often that if you've been on a few dates with a guy, he'll assume that you are going to stop seeing other people or speaking to other people. No comment, by the way, on whether he's going to stop speaking to other people or or seeing other people, but it definitely seems to be like an unspoken expectation. And my nemesis is unspoken expectations. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm okay with people having expectations of me, but state them. Don't, like, have them all hidden and soupy underneath the the surface. Ask the questions. And like you said, if they don't want to know the answer, don't ask the questions, but don't have any expectations that this person is doing this and this is how it's going. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm considering my own life just like maybe stepping away from that and saying like, there might be a period where I just, just literally just stop everything and everything, literally everything and everything. And then just singularly speak to one person at the ruin of probably my entire social media career. But <laughs> let's be honest, I mean, like a lot of the followers based on the back, the fact that we have conversation backwards and forwards. So just polite conversation, never crossing boundaries most of the time. Like, you know, the vast majority of time, someone will send me a message and they might say, hey, you look great today. And I'll say, oh, thanks very much. I really appreciate that. Um, but at the same time, not answering that is has, has, has genuinely has consequences like on my overall um, kind of effectiveness. And don't forget, I make about a third of my wages from my social media. So it's like having engagement is super, super important. Um, at the same time, you try not to like, I'm not leaving anybody on, I'm not getting engaged, but I was thinking what would happen if I just stopped responding to all messages? Yeah. Like potentially, potentially all messages um, from the first date to see what had happened. Yeah, but that's kind of why why I started doing the date for a year in a way is like there's this like big complicated web of messaging and talking and blah, and I was like, okay, we'll just <laughs> just like create a blank sheet of paper and just sit with the blank? blank sheet of paper for a while. Hmm? You're not dating, but is the paper blank? Yeah, are there are no there are no prospects. No DMs, no DM slides. 
Like an occasional reply to a story, but not like with intent. Or at least yeah. if there's in, if there's intent, I'm not conscious of there being intent. Maybe there's like secret, hidden, subconscious intent. Okay. But yeah. So for the year of no date, I'm just trying to get my head around it. This sounds amazing to me because this sounds like it really needs like some serious rules. There's a year of no dating, but that, no dating involves like obviously no sex, no getting involved. Does that involve no like lining up for future end of dating? Not necessarily. There will be an end to that. Does it, does it involve <laughs> no sowing of seeds? I mean, no, there could be sowing of seeds, but it, it would need to, like, stay at a certain level. And, Phil, you said something interesting to me about the right person. Like, if I met somebody now and they were amazing, like, would they wait for me? But it's a weird concept to wait for me, because how do we even know if it's a thing? Because I wouldn't get to the point if we know it's a thing yet. Mm. Do you know what I mean? One day and just been like, I really would go out with you tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, on one date with um, uh, one particular like person who was in my life for nearly a decade, went on one date and the following week she was she stayed in my flat for four nights straight and we did not not see each other for about three years. Yeah, I mean, like I moved in with somebody after three weeks, like I'm an impulsive person. Yeah. But the whole point is like I'm trying to conserve or, or re-channel my energy into things that are not dating because I was finding it so consuming and also exhausting and like in this whole like dating app horror that I was like yeah I'm just gonna like totally wipe the slate clean and then see how I feel and so far it's really good I that was possible I'd be interested to see if I could do the same thing just to literally just entirely be like wipe the slate clean yeah or would like the shadows of the past just appear like very like after Pe- a of time. yeah I uh, mean people have tried to make a reappearance that I mean and they're like but it's almost welcome people welcome people mm, well i mean no one's welcome i'm not dating i like i appreciate the gesture surely we've all got not... a couple of people that would always be welcome to just pop up if you were they... single you've been away for a while and then there's a couple of people that if they popped up you'd be like hey yeah and bad. like i get dm slides like I, I, like i have people who who are you know still trying but the point is i don't go anywhere with it I'd be, I'd be so interested if I could do that. Well, there's a couple of people that I just think are fantastic people, fantastic humans, girls I've met and I really get on with and we've had great things before. And if I'd gone six months, say, for example, and not seen anybody and they, it'd be very hard if they popped up and they were like, ciao. And I'd be in well, very, yeah. I'd struggle to be like, we, we cannot have a conversation. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm only on month two. I'm sure it will get considerably harder as, as time goes on. Um, but certainly the intent is there to... Yeah. to to pause this pause all dating phenomenal. efforts phenomenal an in- challenge i think it's fantastic an interesting question about the seed sowing because where is when does the seed become a shoot you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, i really like gardening so i'm like right at home in this gardening metaphor but it's, it's totally fair point we're going to move this on now to question okay. two yes good idea. so far richard has not wrong because <laughs> we've only asked <laughs> one so question two and if you do get this one right, we're going to cut away the options, by the way, because okay. you are doing some exercise. <laughs> In the USA, 30% of people have used a dating site or app. What percentage has said that they have been married or a committed relationship with someone they have met through online dating? Option A, 21%. Option B, 12%, or option C, 4%. I'm going to go to 12%. That is correct. So we're taking away the options. Bloody well done. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought that. I thought about one in 10, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I feel like it's higher than that. Like, mm-hmm. But maybe it's just that those relationships don't really go anywhere. Maybe it's volume rather than longevity. Yeah. Um, okay, question three. Uh, I'm going to read you some lyrics and I need you to tell me what song or musical they're from. You ready? Mm -hmm. The sun's in my heart and I'm ready for love. Let the stormy clouds chase everyone from this place. (laughs) What? (laughs) No more options. A difficult one. (laughs) Fucking hell. Do you know what? We might need to add a load more questions onto this. Oh, yeah, because it's smashing it. We're not going to see any fucking burpees at this rate. (laughs) Question four. In Harry Potter, because of your tattoo, how many staircases does Hogwarts have? 
Oh no, my god! No, no, no options. <laughs> this is so hard because there are very honestly, I love Harry Potter, and there are very few questions that are ever asked of me where I don't have an inkling. Like I, I religiously read those books, and uh, I would say that I know those books better than most people know their religion. In fact, and I honestly, it's how many staircases does Hogwarts have? Mm-hmm. This must be come out of book one. This must be a book one, a book one introduction fact when he first arrives and talking about the moving staircases. It must be a book one. Um, I'm just gonna have a random stab and say eleven. I don't have no idea. I literally have got no idea. Well, thank God for that because we need to see some working out. <laughs> what is it? It's 142. 142. Where does it say that? <laughs> it says. I it. mean, don't ask us for the sources. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, Seriously, I'm thinking, like I, I, I'm so surprised. <laughs> We searched for Harry Potter facts and we got the answer. 11, so I thought it might be like 11 walls of stairs or something like 142. So, 142. And that is your homework from today's podcast, <laughs> is that you need to go and find where in the Harry Potter books it says that there are 142 stairs. You know, my sister's a primary school teacher and she, on a Friday, used to ask the children to come up, spend all day, come up with the hardest question they could for Harry Potter, and then she'd text it me and give me an hour to get back with the answer. And I'd be Amazing. like, mm, and it used to be a really good challenge every week. Challenge. Anyway, carry on. Okay, last question. In Moana, uh, so you, you spoke on First Dates Hotel about yeah. dancing with Samson to Moana. In Moana, what animal does Moana's grandmother turn into when she passes it away? Um, uh, what are they called? Uh, oh, we're going to give options. Let's give options. No, 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 no options. options. A stingray. No, no. Like, it looks like a stingray. It's like the big, you know, flat thing, and it normally has a sting on the tail, but I think it's called a stingray. Okay, so I need to just get Phil to fact check something for me. Mm-hmm. Is is there a difference? There is a difference between a stingray and a manta ray. There is a, a manta massive ray. difference. Manta ray. Yes. yes. What the fuck is the difference? Okay, so stingrays have the sting on the back, but manta rays kind of like go round at the sides. They're a lot bigger um. as well. Manta rays are huge. Well, every day's a school day. There we, go. we normally do dating facts. Now there's just burpees, but I feel like that was a <laughs> that, well, it was pretty close to be fair. Yeah, I mean, three out of five. That is good. That's my that next good. tattoo as well. I've got Maui's hook being tattooed on my. Ah, oh, sweet, awesome. <laughs> That's great film. To be fair, good. No, okay, no, so moral of the story: you know loads of weird trivia. Uh, and we get to see you do some crossfit or crossback challenges on a, on a video or something. Are you sure you want me to do this like now or do you want to wait seven or eight months before we get down with that? Mm. <laughs> 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 Jur- jury's out. Um, ask me on the day. And I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Now, I know you all may be asking, where's the 2020 been? Where's final thoughts? Where's back to the questions? Well, the content was that good. We're making a two-part special. The next episode's on Wednesday. And if you join us on Instagram Live at 8 p.m. tonight, you can see Richard do his challenge. If you'd like to get in touch, then you can do. Whether that's to submit a dating disaster, ask a question, or ask for some advice. We're not that good at helping, but one of our guest experts will certainly be able to. So if you'd like to get in touch, head on over to our socials. On Facebook and Instagram, it's at Unhinged and Bumbled Up. On Twitter, it's at Bumbled Up. Or by email, it's unhinged.and.bumbledup at gmail.com. If you liked the episode, then please don't forget to like and share and click the follow button above. We also now have a website, www.unhingedandbumbledup.co.uk. See you all next week. Wrong name. <laughs> 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 <laughs>